Ladies and gents, welcome to TFI. Most of you out there know that you can't emboss text onto, uh, onto uneven curved surfaces. You can emboss it onto flat or conical or spherical faces, but anything that's uneven, wavy, you can't emboss text on. Go on, give it a try. If you're thinking there, I'm pretty sure you can. Go on, give it a, give it a shot. You can it. And then press pause, do it, come back, and then press, press resume, and uh, we'll see it never happened. I found a way of doing it, though. I found a way of doing it, and I'm actually quite excited for this, because this was going to be a completely different tutorial, and I found this, and I was like, I actually quite like this, this could be its own thing. So follow along, follow along, I'm going to create the shape from scratch, so you can you can follow me along. Uh, this, so there's going to be a bit of bit of a delay before we get cracking, but uh, that's just so people can indeed follow along. So we're going to do a rectangle, 100, tab 100, and uh, I'm just making any old shape really, something that's got curvy indeed surfaces. Then we're going to do another sketch. And let's raise a plane up from there by let's say 80. And we'll do we'll do a square around. We'll do a square around. We'll make this uh in fact, let's make this 50. Let's make that 50. Let's finish that. Let's turn off that plane and let's loft between the two. So that's gonna give us a really funky, weird, uh curvy shape once we go to the conditions tab and we'll make that a direct condition and then that direct condition. Shall we leave that normal? No, let's make them both direct. Let's make them both direct. Then click OK, and then let's let's do some fillets. Let's loop a fillet around that bottom edge there, at say 10 mil. And then once you've got that complete, you don't need to do this bit, but why not? Let's mirror the entire body around that top face, and uh, like that gives us something wavy to work with. Right. I'm not even going to use most of this, but I don't care. I don't care. It looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Okay, the technique that I'm going to use isn't actually using the emboss tool. It's using a different mixture of techniques, but it works. And if it gets the job done, happy day. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do a 2D sketch, and we're going to float a 2D sketch off of the XZ plane in this case. Hold the left mouse button and drag. Make sure you're raised away from the solid. So let's say approximately 60 mil. And then let's create some text. Let's create some text. Let's do a text box. So big. Out there and we'll put the words open in there and let's make that I don't know 10 mil in size no, 10 mil in size press I didn't want to I didn't I didn't want to commit to it I didn't want to commit to it god damn it but it's when committed to it let's highlight all of that and we'll, we'll center it and we'll middle justify it and shall we rotate it do I care which orientation it's in I don't think I do I don't think I do it's all the same click OK and that's dropped it in the center. I'm, I'm, I'm happy enough with that. Right, let's drag the the text box so size, and then we need to position it in the middle, so we'll project. Let's project that line there, and we've got that point to work with. So we're gonna do a horizontal constraint between there and there. This is a really bad way of doing it, Neil. This is, bad. This is not best practice, but it's gonna work. Right, vertically constrain that point there to the bottom uh, little midpoint there. Right click and OK, and then oh, we need to we need to horizontal the top edge. There we go. Right click and OK. Stop resizing the goddamn box, please, inventor. Thank a doodle do read. So what next? You could, if you wanted to, finish the sketch and give the emboss a shot. <laughs> Just give it a crack. You'll find it's not going to work. Emboss, wrap the face, pick a flat curved surface. By the way, you can only pick one, and then when you click OK, it's going to kick off and say that what you're trying to emboss onto isn't a flat cylindrical or conical face that's that's where the problems come from and you can try whichever combination of other things you want extruding as a surface whatever it's not going to work nothing works so what we're going to do we're going to go back into sketch 3 and then we're going to use a brand new tool 2017 unfortunately this is unique to 2017 right click on the text and we're going to convert the text to geometry you've got a number of different shx fonts to choose from so these are standard out the box sh hex Fonts. If you want to get your own, though, you can do. You can just Google SHX fonts, and then you can. There's, I mean, there's a forum post somewhere with uh, with like yeah, 762 SHX AutoCAD fonts. So download those if you want. But either way, the ones that you get out of the box are pretty good. So you, I mean, you get a few dozen of them, but some of them aren't going to work because they're just single line conversions. For example, 
like that there, that's going to explode the text into single line letters. There's going to be no profile there to work with. So what you can do is just select the top one and then use the down arrow and you can cycle through what they're going to look like. Some of them are going to leave you with like multiple objects, which you'll have to delete manually the inside ones. So if you like that font, you're going to have to stick with it and then delete all the little mini lines on the inside, all the offset lines on the inside. You'll have to delete those and leave yourself with just the outside and the internal lines of the text. But I've found that a good one to use is Times Out, right? This one here. It's a serif font, so it's got the, the you know, the overhangs on the edge of some of the letters. But if you're fine with that, then that's absolutely fine. Click OK. And then what it's done is exploded your text into geometry lines. So it's all lots of individual lines that make up uh, a profile. Unfortunately, though, you can't extrude this. You see, that's not where we're going with this. So if you click Finish Sketch and you try and extrude it, it just doesn't find them as profiles. Even if you if you select Output as a solid, there's just no selectable profile there to work with. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Create 3D Sketch, and then we're going to use Project to Surface. The faces we're going to project to are these two here. Now, do we extend? I'm just wondering, are we going to extend outwards, or we might do? So what we're going to do is pick up all of them and then for the curves you want to select your text just put a window around all of your text and then for the direction you want to select the axis that goes directly towards the surfaces which in my case is the y-axis that's going that way so we're going to pick the y-axis and then click OK and that's going to ex it's going to project the text let's say onto uh, onto those faces so we might get a bit of a bizarre result with this the, the surface is quite curved but we'll see how we'll go we'll see how we'll go with it right finish sketch and we're finished with i think we're finished with this one here so we can turn off that we can right click on him turn the visibility off we can turn the visibility of that work plane off right so the next thing we've got to do is use these lines which have been projected onto the curved surface to split the surfaces of the objects so we're going to go to split and this is a bit of a ball ache it's a bit of a chew and it's going to be different based on what kind of font you've used for the text but hopefully you'll be able to see where I'm kind of going with this. So we're going to use the split tool is going to be the outer. You've got to do it multiple times. It just is what it is. But the split tool is going to be the outer ring of the O in this case. And then for the faces, we're going to split those two faces and then click apply. Then what you've got to do is cancel out of that and then go share the 3D sketch to make it available again. Reactivate split and then now split the inner profile and the split face is going to be those two there. Right. So what that's done is it's give us that and if I hold down control that which is a split face which represents the letter O and then you've just got to repeat throughout all of the remaining text so split the split tool is going to be the P the faces it's going to be these two here click apply and then repeat for that there the internal faces are going to be that there and then split again <laughs> it, it is what it is some some letters are easier than others uh, when you get the likes of E and N, it's just all one profile. So the split tool and then these two faces here. And in fact, that extends over to those faces so it can split those as well. Right, that's it done. The next thing to do is turn off the 3D sketch. You don't have to do this, but it just gets it out of the way. And that leaves us with a split profile on the curved faces. But there's no solid there. For example, if you go to visual style and make that just shaded only, you can't see it because there's nothing there. They're just split edges. This is it. This is what you do. Thicken select the profile for one letter at a time and then for the distance that's however high you want the letters to be you're going to have to maybe compromise in some regions here if you try and thicken them too much they might not work and in most cases as well you have to disable automatic blending but we'll try for one millimeter click apply and that should thicken the o off the surface by one millimeter and there's your embossed text and then you just repeat for the remaining text sometimes if there's any bizarre like overlaps between some of the letters and if some of the thickens sort of self intersect you might get problems but nope it's done it just fine for that one we'll try the e hopefully we're all good oh, I've just missed one there tell you what we're gonna we'll undo and we'll start that one again that that and then that's a third profile and then finally n two three and we've got a couple more here, that one there, that one there, and that one there. And then there you go. There's your... Right, I just had to stop there and just read that. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is this? Right, so we've basically we've got we've got a number of profiles thickening out from different faces and inventors just like, yeah, this is a bit funky. Do you want to just accept it? Yes, of course I do. Of course I do. It looks just fine. I mean, you can see there, that is, that's a pretty good thicken. 
that's looking pretty creamy. So that's it. That's how you do it. It's, I'm quite excited about that. I'm really liking the result of that. And then once you've got that finished, you can go to the thicken in the browser, select them all, go to the properties of them, and then you can change the color to something, I don't know, I don't know, black cast perhaps, something like that. Make them a different color, and there's your embossed text. And the good thing about this as well is that well, the text's properly attached to the surfaces, so if the surface has changed, the text's gonna update and be adaptive. This also works as well with freeform surfaces, which I was really excited to see. So we've got the exact same technique being used here. So thicken that out by one mil. There we go. Turn those off. And there's a thicken on a freeform surface. And what I was meaning by it is adaptive is if I go back to the original freeform and then change this point here, for example, and just pull that out a little bit, like so, you'll see the text updates to suit based on where the uh, where the freeform surface is so it's really nice i i'm really enjoying this this is so good so that's pretty good that's convert text to geometry and then using split and thicken to create embossed text on uneven surfaces hope you enjoyed that keep that one in your back pocket and use it later on i'll see you in the next one toodles